Let's play a game. If I tell you to think of a gun from SIG, what's the first gun you think of? A lot of you may have said the SIG 365 or perhaps the Spear lineup. But let's go again. What's the next SIG gun you think of? You might have said the 320 or the MPX. Let's go one more time. What's the next SIG gun you think of? Perhaps you said the 226 or the 229. The only problem is we've never had those guns on the show which means my montage is now ruined. Come on, man. You and your woman. You guys gotta go, man. Go on, get! I got a hostage situation. Guys, no, no. You gotta go somewhere else. You gotta go. There we go. There we go. Get out of here! That's a tone thing. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'd be willing to bet we'd have to go pretty far down the list, perhaps even exhaust the list, before many of you would say a SIG 1911. And to be honest with you, I'm in the exact same boat. So when SIG called and asked if we wanted to review their new X-Series 1911, my first thought was, totally forgot you guys made 1911s. But we're the 1911 syndicate, so of course we would like to review that. So buckle up, bucko. Too much. Because today we've got the SIG X-Series 1911. Right, guys before we get into the video a couple disclosures so one sig sent us the gun um for the review here first time that's ever happened um that will not judge the um opinions that are stated in the video we do our absolute best regardless of dynamics with uh, manufacturers no manufacturers pay us but um they do send us guns to do videos on so we will give you a fair shake in the video pros cons all that kind of stuff then beyond that i've been wearing you'll see it in the whole freaking video today a Segura belt, right? And they don't just make belts. A lot of you guys, because we talk about the belts so much, they got the emissary, the light under Velcro. That's the one that me and Chris both EDC because it's just great. It's mobile. It's not too rigid, right? It's just, it's like a really, really perfect EDC belt. But they've got like the the uh, little headrest panels where you can attach like IFAX and shit like that to the back of your vehicle headrest now. Um, they've got the little magazine pouches. I've been loving those things lately to clip under this little, I don't even know how to describe it. But like for those of you that don't rock battle belts, it's a really, really nice solution to be able to rock mags on like an emissary belt or something like that and they got the battle wagon all that kind of stuff anyway code is 1911 syndicate that saves you 10 percent off check them out they've been a great sponsor for us let's talk about the gun i think going into any review it's important to judge something for what it is and not what it isn't and or what you want it to be. It's like judge it for what you can reasonably expect it to be per the price point and what they advertise it to be. So what is it? Well, the X-Series. I'll tell you what these bad boys are running. So without the dot, they've got a version with the dot and without the dot. Without the dot, MSRP is going to be $1,650. Street price seems to be uh, trading for about $1,500. hundo. With the dot, and I don't mean with a red dot cut, I mean actually with the dot, um, they are $1,950. Street price is around $1,800. So what does that mean? It's a mid-tier production, $1,911. Um, don't judge it against a hand-fit, you know, Super tight, you know, $5,000 1911. That's not what this is, right? This is in the that MIDI production tier category. So overall looks and design. I think it's a good looking gun. It came in and I thought, hey, you know, because I didn't see, I don't think I actually saw what this looked like because I basically got this before the, the launch. It sounds like such an asshole statement, doesn't it? But it's like, I got this before, before the launch, but it was like... I, point being, I hadn't really like seen photos of this come out yet. And it came in and I looked at it and I thought, 
that's a good looking gun. Like I do find it to be an attractive, uh, attractive lines, you know? Um, the Coyote Brown's cool. It's not too busy. It's like, I don't think that they really tried to do too much on this. It's not super obnoxious on branding. Hey, when it comes to looks, I can get down with it. From the site, it does appear that this is a Coyote PVD finish. I'm a little, I'm not quite sure what to think about that because it definitely does seem like, hey, it's gonna show holster wear pretty quickly and easily. You may not care about that and for some of you, you may actually prefer that because you think your guns have more character once they get beaten up. I don't actually disagree with that statement. I'm just saying, hey, Typically when I think of PVD, I think like super durable because I've had some PVD guns and it's just like, hey, this is showing, I don't know, holster wear pretty quickly. I don't really care. It doesn't bother me at all. It's just, you know, just stating it for the record. Fit and finish, how is it? It's largely what I would expect for something in this price point. Um, it's not the tightest gun in the world, right? They'll, they'll be the, the classic, you know, you can hear some rattle rattle there, you know, it's Colt-esque uh, in a way. So not the tightest gun in the world, but again, not a hand fit gunsmith made 1911. Everything is reasonably well done. You know, you look at the grip safety and you go, okay, cool. Yeah, okay, you know, could that be fit better if someone, you know, was really putting a lot of time into it? Sure, it could, you know, there's some play in it, but it's like, I don't know, it's worked. I'm not gonna bitch about it too much. Is the Magwell like super well fit? Not really, you know, I mean, it's like you can see light coming through the bottom of it. So, but again, I'm nitpicking this because um, for better or worse, the 1911 Syndicate has sort of carved out its little niche as, uh, as, uh, as we review a lot of 1911s and 2011s. So I do believe that what we say about these, these guns um, does carry at least some relevance inside of the uh, gun tuber space. So I want to give you guys a fair shot because if I tell you this is the tightest gun in the world and you go pick one up, and you see it's, it's a little bit rattly, you might go, oh, 1911 skin has no clue what they're talking about and decreases our credibility. So I'd rather give you a fair shake, even while just telling you, hey, look, it's a production gun and it's fit about like a production gun. Okay, so let's talk about the thing that this gun does the best. And I guess in many ways, a compliment, I think the gun is at best on the range as a shooter. So we'll shoot and talk through a handful of uh, features and, and things that the gun's doing well. Let's see if I can not completely screw this up. Well, I see one hole. I'm gonna hope that that's two bullets that went in one hole there. So truthfully, when I first shot the gun, I thought, hey, look, it, it's got a nice recoil impulse. Because the reality is, as many people on the internet like to complain about, I can't believe you complain about 45. 45 is a thumpy round. Like if you're used to shooting nine mil, 45 is a reasonably hard hitting round. And the gun, I would even say compared to other full length 45 1911s that I have, it does have a noticeably nice recoil impulse. In terms of reliability, so, Talk a little bit about, so the mag I was just shooting is the SIG mag that it comes with. That was just some uh, some reloads that I'm finishing up on. So we'll swap over to a different mag. So this is a Wilson Combat mag. This is the only place where occasionally I've had a reliability situation. And not this time though. So the gun has really been very reliable. I haven't had a malfunction while shooting it. The only place, and we'll test it on this third mag here, the only place that I have had the occasional hiccup is when I'm doing a slide lock reload and that first round doesn't quite chamber. And I don't know if, I don't know exactly what that is. Um, and it's happened on a couple different mags. It doesn't truthfully strike me as a giant issue because it's only here and there, but occasionally we will get that. We'll test it out on this reload. Clean. So the grip is a nice feeling grip. Um, the G10 grips, they are, I don't even know if I call them aggressive. They're somewhere in this hybrid zone. Like they're not like, oh boy, they're in there. It's not Springfield TRP level with the LPI and everything where you're like, dude, that gun ain't going nowhere. This gun's not going anywhere, but it doesn't have to go so aggressive about the process of it. So the grip is nice. On the reliability front, we're gonna switch over. So I'm, now I'm running a, uh, a 1911 mag from Cabot and we swapped over to some hollow points. This is just some P PMC hollow points. They are fairly thumpy. 
Um, but it does seem to run hollow points pretty well uh, also. I'm a lefty. I'm one of those few people in the world that needs an ambidextrous safety. The gun comes with one. I do appreciate that. And I will say just one other little thing of note that the gun does point fairly well. We'll talk about the red dot here in a sec. Um, not my favorite feature of the, well, fan of having a dot, not as much this particular dot, but the gun does point very nicely. I know that's just mechanics thing, but I do have to admit, it's fairly easy, especially for a small window red dot like this to pick it up. That said, there are some odd choices that sig made with this gun guys will be back with the video momentarily here big thanks also to the sponsor of today's video that'd be flp firearms legal protection they've been with us for a while there's a code you guys can plug in it's self-defense insurance right stuff that hey if you carry a gun or a knife for that matter or you keep a gun in your vehicle or a bedside table or whatever it is any sort of defensive scenario as long as it's legally justified they cover all of that Codes 1911 saves you guys chunk off of the services, an actual chunk, that's a metric term. You guys can look it up on Webster's Dictionary. Chunk is a lot. Um, so they got different plans for like, if you don't really travel that much um, and it just covers you, then they've got all the way up to the family plan covers you and anyone else in the family. That's why it's the family plan, right? And then uh, in a kind of a mid-tier plan if you travel a bunch. Beyond that, hey, check out 1911syndicate.com. Uh, you can learn about how you can get involved with us. We've got our Patreon. We've got really cool stuff. I mean, man, our Patreon got really treated to some cool uh, shit not that long ago in regards to a private class that's happening. We'll, they will get to tour the Grey Room and um, see James Williamson in person. Maybe he'll let them touch his hair. I mean, God knows what could happen. So we got the Patreon link below. 1911 syndicate for real estate. Let's start talking about the gun again. So some odd choices were made. What would those be? Well, I'm gonna give you a three. The first thing is when the gun came in, I noticed a fairly lackluster trigger, right? And it was interesting because I had a few people messaging me asking a specific question I'll bring up. And I'm like, interesting that all of you are asking that. Let me look into that. So I get this mushy trigger where it's like, okay, there's like this little take up here. And then there's like this kind of like wall of mush and and it kind of goes. It's not a great 1911 trigger, if I can be perfectly honest with you, and that is a hallmark of 1911s. So here's the deal. We have to do a little bit of um, understanding for those of you not really in the 1911s. So there's Series 70 and Series 80 um, guns. A Series 80 gun adds in some safety features, most notably a firing pin safety that is trigger actuated. So, you know, it's interesting. You, you add in... The pro is, hey, you add in some safety enhancements uh, in terms of the gun being dropped and uh, being as safe as possible. And the trade-off is a really mushy trigger. Like, I mean, it is notably not a good 1911 trigger. And, and it, you just, you know, so, hey, you have to weigh that out for yourself. Hey, do I like the enhanced um, benefits of, of this Series 80 gun or do I want a Series 70 gun? That's up to you. I'm not here to answer that for you. Um, it is just interesting because I couldn't find a another 1911 that I own that is a Series 80. Um, everything from TSOS to Wilson's to TRP's, the Cabot's, I mean, the, the full lineup, uh, every other 1911 that I own was on a Series 70. So it's like, you know, it's just something to be aware of. Hey, if you're just buying this for, because I want that incredibly crisp 1911 trigger, eh, okay, cool. Like that's going to be sort of a lackluster point on this particular gun. Next thing that I'm not particularly in love with is the actual red dot. So the dot's fine. This is more a matter of the right dot for the right gun versus is the dot good or, or, or not. So the footprint that they use on the X-Series is the Shield RMS-C. The dot in particular that comes, there's a couple different models. This one actually comes with a dot on it. The dot is called the Romeo X Compact. So the dot acquisition is clean. Like I said in the previous section, the gun actually points very well. And it's like, you know, some people might get all, you know, their panties in a bunch about a blue tent or whatever. I'm like, I don't know, man. I still see a target when I look through the glass. Who really cares? But to me, my issue is more so with the Romeo X compact side of it. It's a full-size gun and I want a full-size dot, right? It's like no one, like this isn't meant to be some like, you know, 
a 365X macro or something like that, where you're like, yeah, I can kind of pull double duty between, you know, you know, a range gun and CCW. It's like, eh, I mean, sure, could you CCW? Sure, but it's not what it's meant for. It's meant to be a range duty use gun. And I want a full size dot, right? So it's like the window is just a little small for my taste and the controls and the buttons are so damn tiny that I mean, if you have gloves on, absolutely forget about it. I mean, the up and the down button and then the actual adjustments, I didn't have a Torx wrench small enough to make these adjustments. They send the gun with the proper tool. So it's like, yes, you will have them, but literally that's how small it is. I didn't own a tool small enough to make the windage and elevation adjustments. So, you know, hey, the dot's fine. It's just, I, I want a full size dot on a full size gun. Last thing that was a tad bit odd was holster fitment. So I have, shooting a lot of 1911s and, and 2011s, virtually any 1911 or 2011 that, that comes in, I've got a holster already for it, right? I've got a piece of Kydex that was molded to some particular gun that will work on whatever the new one that comes in. I don't think I've had to get a holster made for a gun in at least a year and a half uh, when it comes to the 1911 platform. So, and this SIG fit nothing. Like I didn't have a holster that this fit. My only real theory is because of the design of the slide with the way that like, kind of sort of tri-top slide is like it is but it also isn't in the traditional sense is why i think it doesn't fit any holster so that's a little inconvenient i do have a solution for you which is so this is from qvo tactical it's their light bearing i don't know the exact model name so um but i'm sure you can go find it i actually had this made for my infinity that was the last gun that i got a holster made for um with an x300 so this holster from roger this holster from roger does fit because it's indexing on the light not the gun so it's not particularly snug like the gun will yeah come out with a little bit but it's like hey it does fit but it's the only option i've been able to find that does fit so those are just a couple of the little oddities with the gun okay let's talk about some other features you got to pardon the notes everyone this is what happens when you film in the great outdoors here been chasing cows doing all kinds of shit today so a couple other things that i would just note to you real quick the mags that come with the gun are good i was actually very pleasantly surprised they're, they're like the full follower mags a lot of companies just cheap out and they're like hey man someone that's going to spend 1500 to two grand on a gun they're going to have some nice mags so it's like just give them like the basic mil spec shit and it's like i mean it's just real real hit and miss on those so these come with actually really nice mags i've been very happy with the uh, sig 1911 mags i also like the backup irons that come with the gun so they're tritium so you got two dots back here one dot up here aka three dot tritium sights and they're good um hell you could take the red dot off of this and just rock the irons and it'd be perfectly adequate like i, I would not change those irons at all and because the dot sits nice and low in the slide even though they're not, I mean, you'll see they're not tall irons. They're not suppressor height sights. They're not even notably tall iron sights, but they still are a lower one third uh, co-witness with inside the window, which is nice. And definitely if you were gonna, you know, have a duty weapon or something like that, you would probably want that. it will probably require by your department to have that. The grips are good. G10, like I said uh, in the previous section, like, hey, they're good. Um, they're not too aggressive. They're not too soft. Like they're just, they're good. I like the grips. It's a, uh, so obviously we've got a pick rail. Typically one of the interesting things with 1911s is just the dimensions typically mean you've got to run a Surefire X300B model. That's the one with the screw. This one takes, this is the A model and the A model indexes on there just fine. So that's a nice part because I don't really like the B model because I just find sometimes the screw is i don't know it just seems like it's just not as it's just not my favorite system bottom line you know whatever i like what i like guys five inch only right now the commander length will be coming soon how do i know that because i looked at the sig website and it said commander length coming soon and right now it's only in 45 i would love it if they would do a nine mil version of this as well i know for so many people they think it's like blasphemy that a 1911 could not be in 45 but i'm just telling you 1911s in nine mil especially, especially full weight guns like this shoot incredibly soft and are very very nice with that said let's take you to some final thoughts so let's give you some final thoughts. Overall, I like the gun. It's been a good shooter. Um, it's been reliable for me. I would even note that, hey, all the time, when the gun first came in, threw some oil on it, I always take a gun apart, throw some oil on it in case there's any like factory, you know, gunk and that just kind of that gunkiness that comes on guns sometimes. Took it apart, cleaned it, threw some oil on it, did not clean it for the remainder of the review process prior to today because I wasn't trying to like, you know, give the reason a gun not to work today. So it's like, hey, the gun has been reliable and overall I've liked it. I find it to be 
a pleasing looking gun. Like I said, it's a nice shooter. It is a nice gun to shoot, but it's not perfect. Hey, there are, you know, some things with the Series 80 and, and stuff like that, that I, I do think, hey, some odd choices. Are there some things that could be better? Yes. But I also look at the feature set and I just say, okay, the nice thing is really out of the box. There's nothing you need to do here, especially if you get the red dot model. You go, okay, what do we got? We got good grips, got an ambidextrous safety that's pretty solid. Um, comes with a dot, comes with a rail, um, takes an X300. I figured out a holster solution for it. So you go, hey, I don't need, you know, good irons. So there's nothing I really need to do out of the box. So it's kind of in this hybrid zone. All of that to say, final ranking, where am I gonna put this? I've really kind of debated this. Um, I'm gonna go C plus. I'm just gonna say, hey, there's some things that I think could be improved. And, you know, I don't know how SIG will ultimately take this video. I think, you know, there's been a lot of positives and some critical things that I'm just saying, hey, look, here's some, so, some uh, 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 as objective as I can make it, feedback on what I like and things that I think could be a little bit better. C plus feels like a fair grade. So that's it, boys and girls. We will see you next week for another, hopefully thrilling edition of the 1911 Syndicate. And until then, I really need a tagline here. I need like a stay stay safe and shoot sharp or uh, fucking sh shoot hard and clean your gut. I don't fucking do that. I'll see you guys next week.